Ah. I'm just going to read from Ross Paul Dark just a little tiny bit uh, from this book and this is chapter 3 of Ross Paul Dark or a part of chapter 3 okay and it's an exchange between uh, Ross, Judd and Prudy You're tired after a hard morning's work, said Ross. Judd looked at him uneasily from under hairless brows. With Joshua, he had always had to mind his P's and Q's, but of Ross, he had never been at all afraid. A harem scarum, highly strung, lanky youngster, there was nothing in him to fear, but two years of soldiering had changed the boy. "'Tis as clean as a new scrub place can be,' said Judd, on a grudging note. "'We be nothing for two hours solid. Splinters I got in me, and from the old floor drattin'. Blood-poisoned I shall be, maybe. Runs from your, and to your arm it do. Up your veins, and f you're dead.' Ross turned his sleepy but unquiet eyes on Prudy. Your wife has not suffered from her wetting. As well not to forget the feel and taste of water. Very little is used in gale. Judd looked up sharply. Who says gale? Prudy ain't going to gale. What's she done? No more than you have. A pity you can't share the same cell. Prudy sniggered. You will have your jest. The jest, said Ross, was yours last night and for fifty nights before. You can't get neither of us convicted for being a bit tedly, said Judd. Tent law, tent right, tent just, tent sense, tent friendly. Leave alone all we done for you. You are my father's personal servant. When he died, you were left in a position of trust. Well, you may have a guinea for every field you find that isn't choked with weed and lying fallow. The same for a barn or a stable that is not falling down for need of timely repair. Even the apples in the orchard are mouldering amongst the dead leaves for lack of someone to gather them. Twere a poor summer for fruit. Down come the apples, rotten away with wasps in them. Shocking twas. You can't do nothing to an apple when there's a drain in them. Not except kill the drain and eat the apple, and there is a limit to what two bodies can eat. "'Twas a nice chance I didn't swallow one of they wasps,' said Prudy. "'There was I, munching away as clever as you like. "'Then sharp, just as I asked me teeth in un, I hears a buzz, buzz. "'And my ears, there he is. "'You can't see the front end, but the back end is there, "'waving about like a lamb's tail. "'All his legs are going and straight like a flag. "'If I hadn't just stirred, Get one of them, they in your ozzle, said Judd gloomily. Out come their sting and fit. You're dead. Lazy in everything, said Ross. But the search for excuses, like two old pigs in their sty, and as slow to move from their own patch of filth, Prudy picked up her apron and began to dab her nose. Ross warmed to his theme. He had learned abuse from a master and had added to it while away. Also, he knew his listeners. I suspect it must be easy to convert good stock into cheap gin, he ended. Men have been hanged for less. We thought, twas rumoured, Judd sucked his gums in hesitations. Mm, the folks said that I was dead. Who said it? Twas common belief. Prudy said somberly. Yet I find it only near my own home. Did you begin the story? No, no, tent true. By not by no means. Tis we you should thank for giving the lie to such a story. Nail it, I says. Nail it to the bud, I says. I've got the firmest faith, I says, and Prudy can bear me forth. Did we believe such a wicked lie, Prudy? Did a life no, said Prudy. My uncle, my uncle has always thought you wastrels and parasites. I can think of, I 
think I can arrange for your case to come before him. They stood there on shifty feet, half resentful, half alarmed. He had no understanding of their difficulties, and they had no words to explain. Any guilt they might have felt was long since overgrown by these explanations which they could not frame. Their feeling now was one of outrage at being so harshly attacked. Everything had been done or left undone for a very good reason. We've only four pairs of hands, said Judd. Boss's sense of humour was not working, or he might have been undone by this remark. There is much gale fever this year, he said. A lack of cheap gin will not be your only hardship. He turned and left them to their fears. And that was a part of chapter three, Ross Poldark.